I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge two people who are with us this morning. They have traveled far to come here. A year ago they came. They wanted to surprise me with their visit, but God surprised them because God had me traveling to Haiti. So this morning they came with trepidation and said, hmm, I wonder if God sent her to Japan now. <laughs> but it is really an honor to welcome in our midst my little sister Cindy and her mother, Mother Lo, who've traveled from Boston to worship with us. They've journeyed with me for many years. And as the pastor said earlier, there's something about to happen in this church, and you are here to witness the beginning of it. So thank you for your presence. We are blessed to have you. Thank you. We know this familiar story that our sister Peg read to us. We know it by heart almost. We've pictured an image about the story. We can picture Martha knowing and hearing that their friend Jesus is coming for dinner and she's busy opening the door, sweeping the floor, making sure that everything is tidy and ready, making sure that the ingredients in the kitchen are fresh and just opening that door wide open to welcome Jesus. And her sister, Mary, just plops herself at his feet, forgets about Martha and helping her in the kitchen like maybe she had usually done. And you know, and then we go on in our image with this story and just picture Martha telling Jesus ordering Jesus to scold her sister. Now, let me give you an image. Martha is coming out of the kitchen. Do you have it? Tell him. She has nerve. We know the scripture told us that she fussed a little bit. But how many feel that Mary had the best seat? That's okay, you can raise your hand. It's all right, in the house of the Lord. How many also feel that Martha was right in asking Jesus to scold her sister, to put her back in her place? You can raise your hand, that is okay. But what about the apostles? Couldn't they have helped? They were there. They were part of the guests. Culturally, it would not have been appropriate for them to help in the kitchen. But what about breaking traditions? Didn't Jesus show them in several instances about breaking, doing the right thing in the name of the Lord? Remember the woman at the well? Culturally, Jews avoided as much as possible to interact with the Samaritans who were of mixed race, Jews and non-Jews from foreign lands. Jesus broke tradition then. Even more, the Samaritan woman was of questionable reputation, but yet he talked to her. This chosen woman by the Lord was open to accepting Jesus and being renewed. She was thirsting for her heart and spirit to be renewed. She said yes. Jesus demonstrated that you can break tradition in his name. So yes, a couple of the apostles could have helped Martha, could have volunteered. They did not. And that's not the point that Jesus wanted to make in his visit 
to Martha and Mary's house. Let's look at another aspect of what we are presented in this scripture passage. Martha wanted everything to be just right. The text tells us in verse 40, she was distracted by all the preparations. In other words, Martha was multitasking and attending to multiple fires. And in the midst of all this, she forgets the guest that she has and the greater nourishment that she would be receiving. She forgets her place and orders Jesus to scold her sister. She feels angry and jealous that in her eyes, in Martha's eyes, Mary had the better seat. The evil of jealousy and anger raised its ugly head at that moment. In the letter to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul warns us about this evil. In Ephesians 4, line, verse 26 especially, it says, In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Isn't that the truth? Church, isn't that the truth? Not letting anger or jealousy get a foothold in our hearts and take the space of kindness, compassion, love. How many times have we found ourselves in similar situations? Not easy to walk away from a situation. Not easy to catch our tongue. Hmm. Hmm. When we have such a sharp response to give. The evil of jealousy and anger taking a foothold of our heart. See, Martha forgot in that jealous and anger moment that her sister was as busy as she was. Mary was multitasking as well as she was sitting at Jesus' feet, intentionally listening to his words. Intentional listening is difficult, church. We have to quiet our internal conversations, block outside distractions, focus on the words we hear, retain all that is being said for however long the person speaks, understand what we hear and not respond to any questions asked at that moment, just take it all in. And if it asked, later on to summarize what you've heard to be able to tell it back. Intentional listening. How many of us can do it completely, fully, 100%? Mary was intentional in her listening. Content to be sitting at Jesus' feet, attentive and soaking it all in for her, for her sister, and for us. On the other hand, Martha shows us that she can anticipate, she can plan, she can manage, she can prioritize, she can analyze, and deliver beautiful and nourishing dishes. When you think of what's going on in your life right now, whose hospitality would you rather have? In calming Martha, Jesus reminded her and us that there is a time and a place for everything and all is valued. Jesus reminds us how to engage with the world, not to focus on the imperfections, but to value what is known, to value the rock that we stand on and whose air we breathe. Mary's ability to sit still is a reminder that when life gets too hectic around us, we need to sit and humble ourselves before God. Mary's hospitality reminds us that when we are lost and we are seeking answers, we sit and search for God's guidance. Jesus did it. 
He modeled it for us many times. He retreated at times, went for prayer, praying with the Father before he continued on his ministry. What a beautiful modeling we have. Jesus did it. Mary did it. We can do it. Martha's ability to multitask is a reminder that some of us are better at handling multiple deadlines than others. We have to lift them up and not let the devil of jealousy get the best of us. Martha's hospitality reminds us that we have been given the ability to multitask. We are fully engaged in each single activity as if it was the last time that we were performing that specific activity on behalf of God. Giving each task a hundred percent of our attention and of our presence. Luke's scripture passage also reminds us of Paul's letters to the Philippians, especially chapter 2, verse 3. Do nothing out of selfishness, selfish ambition, or vain conceit, but in humility considers others better than yourselves. In other words, lift them up. Don't bring them down. Don't let the jealous, the evil of jealousy and anger get a foothold of your heart. Martha was a better planner and organizer. Mary was a better listener. Both are called to affirm and lift up each other's skills. We all here have various skills and talents. They complement each other as pieces of a giant puzzle. Each one of us is made in God's image and the tapestry of skills that we bring represent, that we represent, strive for this completeness and fullness that he's asking us to be. Let us focus on the beauty of the tapestry, the beauty of each skill and each talent that we bring, that it complements for the betterment not let not be drawn by the evil of jealousy and anger you see by the time martha realized that she was being fed the word of god she understood her responsibility and delved into her ministry with open heart and love she could step away from the shoulds and the coulds and what people may think syndrome she was being nourished beyond her expectations. When she opened the door that afternoon, she didn't realize how great the nourishment would be. She lived Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is alive and active. Her eyes were open to the light of God. Her ministry started in the kitchen with simple earthly ingredients and were life-giving would nourish generations to come. The flame of giving and feeding would burn inside of her, around her, through her, like the flame of giving that we have at times. What a beautiful way to welcome Jesus in her midst. Mary and Martha are our models of hospitality. I know that Martha has often been portrayed as the one who was juggling too much. But if we pause for a moment and join with her in that minute when she was touched by God's grace, and in that instance when she was full circle with giving and receiving, what a powerful moment of grace that was. It was just a moment but she got it. She was preparing a feast for our Christ and Savior and his disciples and us. And yes, we're receiving the greater gift in return, having recognized the presence of the divine in her midst, in her home, and understood that the way to the Father is through the begotten Son. 
Wouldn't you have liked to be in that living room? In that moment of grace? Can you imagine that moment? What it must have felt like that minute that Martha understood how she stood on both sides. Can you remember the last time you were deeply touched by a friend's unselfish thoughtfulness? A moment of agape love, of truly putting you before them, of being like Mary and sitting at your feet, or being like Martha and organizing everything for your comfort, that moment of grace, that moment of receiving and being nourished. Whew. That grace and quietness is what we hear as verse 42 ends. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her, Jesus says, in response to her fussing. Whatever our call of hospitality is, we do it well. And we cannot be taken away from us. Whether we choose to be a Mary-like or a Martha-like, we do it to its fullest and with compassionate hearts, not letting jealousy or anger to give foothold. We do it in God-like fashion, and it shall not be taken away. We value our style, our individual style of hospitality, we value how Miss Lane is so attentive to the folks who ride the elevator. We value how our brother Cliff tends to the garden on Warren Street and welcomes us with the open tulips and crocuses. We value that our, on any given weekday, if we call the church office, we have the voice of Deacon Ken assuring us that we have called the right place. We value that our little Jaden, who is sick today, but when he comes and greets us and visits us, he knows each one of us by name. Our little seven and a half year old Jaden. We value that our sister Diana List put her heart in preparing a delicious spaghetti dinner for the fundraising event last night. We fed more people than we imagined. I thought at one point it was we were living the miracle of the fish and loaves. <laughs> people kept coming back and forth and back and forth. But they were nourished. They were welcomed. And we need to give glory to God because we recognized our hospitality, whether we are Mary like or Martha like. We value what we have been taught through Mary and Martha. You see, that's where the text stops. It does not elaborate and tells us further how Mary, how Martha returned to the kitchen and how her heart was transformed because she understood in that minute how she was nourished. She was at peace and was filled with humility. She surrendered and was changed. Let me ask you, church, what is the style of hospitality that you would give if you know somebody's coming to dinner? What is the style of hospitality if you knew that you were caught off guard? We know Lent comes every year before Resurrection Sunday. Are we conscious to sit at Jesus' feet and be still a few times during the day? 
Or do we, more be, do we remain pulled in the busyness of the Lenten days? Or do we intentionally become more attentive to the gifts of multitasking that we do so well and give glory to God? Do we surrender and be changed like Martha was? Jesus was welcomed in many homes through his ministries and through his travels. Some homes he deliberately invited himself in, like the tax collector's home. Others he was asked to come to heal the sick, the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. Regardless of the home that he entered, Jesus brought his special anointing, his healing, his comfort, his love. Hospitality goes both ways. How are we welcoming him today in our home? Or like the hymn that we sang earlier, can we recognize and truly appreciate how Jesus is our balm in our own Gilead? We want and anticipate visitors to walk through the doors of our church on Sunday mornings. Do we respond like Mary or Martha? How do we welcome the face of Jesus? We make regular shut-ins, regular visits to the shut-ins. Do we foster a Mary or Martha-like response? We fellowship with one another on Sundays and sometimes other days of the week. Do we notice how we welcome Jesus. Church, we value hospitality. We value it. We spell it. We are transformed by it. We are nourished by it, just like Mary and Martha were. As I close today's message, I want to share with you the lyrics of a simple song that came across my desk a few days ago and it said my life is not my own to you I belong I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me Lord my life is in your hands what a wonderful world to be mindful of whose children we are whose air we breathe Truly, church, to him we belong. The Holy Spirit has equipped us with the right kind of hospitality, whether it be Mary-like or Martha-like. It is our hospitality to claim. Let us remember whose feet we sit at or who sits at our feet. Let us remember the moment of grace Martha experienced as she understood the fullness of her ministry. To him we belong. Truly, Jesus, we love you. Our heart says yes. You are welcome in this place. To you we belong, and we welcome you. Amen. 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 Our hymn of invitation this morning is a reminder for us to always be thankful, thankful to God, thankful that we are here, thankful that he knows by name. 